The father screams alarm to the other knights, so they all rush downstairs to check what's wrong. That's when they see the man desperately trying to wake his daughter up. Sir Gregory is horrified when he sees the curse that Justia is talking about, and while he's busy stuttering, the voice informs Vlad that the girl's breath is slipping away. The curse drains her life force, but only Vlad can see the white smoke coming out of her mouth and flowing straight to the church. He doesn't know how he's supposed to explain this to the others, and while he's still trying to figure this out, Justia suggests that the enemies have sensed her presence. The evil ones tracked her to the inn, and now the poor girl suffers for it. Justia feels responsible and blames herself for being careless. She thought she hid her presence enough and never expected them to sense her level of divine power. All of a sudden, Justia starts walking out of the house and tells the others to explain the situation to the other holy knights if she doesn't return. Seeing everything go out of control, Sir Gregory just groans in frustration, but Vlad wonders why the senior knight isn't doing anything. The young swordsman gets mad when he sees Sir Gregory staying out of it just because of the bounds of authority. Just when they thought things couldn't get any worse, the curse gets triggered all over the village, and all the children become epileptic all of a sudden. The terrified parents scream in pain as they watch their children slip away right in front of them. The entire village erupts with unbelievable pain, and Vlad finds it all unbearable. He wanted more than anything to escape from the back alley, not just so that he could survive. Neither did he seek the sword just because he admired knights. He wanted to make a difference, and if he just sat back and watched horrors like this continue, then it was no better than being stuck in the filthy back alley. The star swordsman resolves to keep moving forward, so he grabs his sword and attempts to go outside and hunt down the enemy. But before he can, Gregory stops him. The senior claims that he understands how Vlad feels, but he also reminds him that a knight's sword must be as heavy as it is sharp. The old man reminds him that their swords require justification and responsibility, but the pained young man snaps at him, wondering what the whole point of justification and responsibility is if they can't even protect what needs protection. Hearing this, Sir Gregory admits that the kid has hit the mark, and all of a sudden he asks Vlad to repeat after him. Vlad is baffled, but then the old man tells him that the sword master's code is the only justification they can rely on right now. The scene shifts suddenly, and we catch up with Lady Justia, who's currently standing in the middle of a place that looks like the heart of the curse. No matter how shrouded the place is in dark energy, one thing she knows for sure is that it stands on the land created by God. As far as she's concerned, nothing can stand in the way of God's will. So, she opens the door of the church, determined to face the enemy, but she's shocked when she sees the demonic symbol plastered on the altar. Seeing the sign, she accuses the false priest of blasphemy. The evil reverend smiles when he hears her voice, claiming that she came sooner than expected and wondering why she came alone. After all, only the two of them can't offer sufficient prayers for the people in the church. Hearing this, Justia realizes that the church is full of alien energy. She can't see or sense any other living beings in there. And that's when the congregation of demons reveals itself to her. The evil forces awaken as the priest laughs maniacally, claiming that the service can now begin. The demons on the other side start running toward the church like zombies on speed, and as they reach the door, they start pulling it apart. The dead people desperately try to pull the door down, crying out for their lost children, and it becomes clear that these were once the parents of the children who were sacrificed. The holy knight is disgusted by the false priest when she realizes what he did and she can't believe that he has no fear of God. In response, the false prophet tells her that God has very little to do with him. Right before dropping his unholy Bible to the floor, the priest admits that God should be feared but claims that he no longer needs to return to the embrace of the Lord. He says this and immediately reveals the dark powers he has acquired, the same powers that allowed him to birth the curse that ravages the village. Seeing this, Justia realizes that this opponent is a lot more powerful than she can handle on her own. So she goes on her knees and calls upon the glorious commander of the heavenly army to help her. Saint Rosino stands beside God in the face of the oppression of evil, and in exchange for the costly price, calls on the saint to come save the wretched souls. Justia makes this holy request, claiming that she would be the one to pay that price, and as she does so, 
Her eyes begin to glow as the golden wings of an angel shoot out of her back. The Holy Knight is once again blessed with unimaginable power from the heavens, and at that moment, a bright light appears in the sky and shoots right down on the church. Just when it looked like the place would be consumed by dark energy, the power of God shines down on the church, casting out all the evil forces there. The evil priest sees what's going on and is horrified because he realizes that this is a solemn exorcism. The light can be seen even without eyes and can be found even in utter darkness. But even though this should scare the false prophet, he considers it more like a challenge. The fact that she would call forth such a light without any preparatory ritual is quite impressive to him. However, he's not ready to give up on his evil church just yet. So he claims that every torch has limits when it stands alone, no matter how bright it may be. With this being said, he begins to conjure another dark spell. Feeling that Justice's spell is the type that comes with a backlash, he informs Justia that what she's using is a miracle that comes at the cost of one's own life and expects her to be very aware of this. After all, he believes that at the end of that glorious light, only deeper darkness remains. The bright, large beam of light shoots down upon the old church and blasts all the evil spirits roaring inside. In the blink of an eye, all the undead soldiers that were so close to attacking Lady Justia are struck down on the spot, and it begins to look like the holy night has already prevailed. Unfortunately, that's not exactly the case, because it seems as though the powerful holy beam might have done the job. We suddenly see that the true source of the dark energy is still very much active and determined to keep fighting. Lady Justia remains on her knee with her mighty sword still dug into the earth because a part of her believes that the holy blast sent by the heavens has saved her from the monsters who were about to devour her. But then, she looks up and scans the church with her gold, glowing eyes, only to realize that she's still got a lot of company. The possessed victims who were struck down earlier start to get back up all of a sudden, and so it becomes clear to the Holy Knight that she still has a lot of work on her hands before this battle is over. Some of the possessed zombies start to reveal themselves from other rooms in the church, while some of the ones that were lying on the floor get back up like nothing ever happened to them. At this point, the white-haired knight begins to panic because she didn't expect that there would be this many victims in the church. She probably thought that the first wave was all of them. So to see even more undead warriors popping up out of nowhere makes her wonder just how many victims there are. She's still too tired to get back up and start swinging her sword at all the victims. So, she just remains on one knee with her sword on the floor. While she's still in this position, the possessed false prophet decides that it's time to make some moves of his own. Right now, his army is still very strong despite Lady Justice's attempt to get the victims out of the picture. For this reason, the evil priest feels that he's got the upper hand at this point. So he walks up to the holy knight with his blade imbued with dark energy and coldly tells her that it's now time for darkness to fall. He's ready to show her how he's going to finish her off. Lady Justia looks up at him from her kneeling position and realizes that it might be game over for her if she doesn't play her cards right. She still has no intention of surrendering, despite being tired right now. The knight is panting and gasping for air as she tries to catch her breath, but her gaze is fixed directly on him, and the look in her eyes suggests that she's only thinking about one thing, how to kill him. Anyway, the prophet starts walking toward her with so much confidence, feeling that he's got this all in the bag. But then, Lady Justia begins to call on the glorious commander of the heavenly army, Saint Rosino, who stands beside God. She's still trying to summon the guy in the sky when the evil priest cuts her off, making it clear that her attempts are pointless. Despite his discouraging comments, Lady Justia completely ignores him and continues to summon the saint from the heavens. She's not even done with the incantation when her eyes begin to glow with the same fiery gold color as earlier, and once this happens, it becomes obvious that her attempts are not as pointless as the priest thought. The white-haired knight can feel the holy energy flowing through her body, so she can tell that the tables are about to turn. With this in mind, she continues to summon the saint, requesting that his church bring down all the enemies. Lady Justia makes this call, and then just like that, a mighty figure appears behind her, glowing with blinding light that forces the false prophet to take a few steps back. The villain is horrified by the power that he's beholding, 
and he almost can't believe his eyes because he probably never imagined that such holy power still existed in this world. The false prophet has been in control of the village for a while now, using his dark energy to torment the people. While the evil priest is still receiving the shock of his life, the holy knight, who has just received a lot more power, vows to take him down, even if it means that it'll cost her life. As she makes this promise, a flaming cart makes its way into the church out of nowhere. It's coming from behind Lady Justia, and she doesn't notice it until it's a few meters away from her. The knight senses the danger, so she turns around and sees it speeding toward her. That's also about the same time that she sees Vlad hanging onto the speeding carriage and telling her to get out of the way. This stunt is what he intends to use to defeat the evil priest. When Lady Justia figures that his flaming attempt is aimed at the prophet, she jumps out of the way immediately. Once she's out of the danger zone, Sir Gregory also reveals himself to be in the church before yelling out at the blonde swordsman to push the burning cart toward the prophet. Vlad does exactly that, and the flaming carriage is hurled at the bad guy. When the priest sees the inferno rolling toward him, he just scoffs. He almost looks disappointed that they would think such a move would hurt him. As far as he's concerned, this attempt is pretty laughable. So he just casually blasts the burning cart into tiny pieces. The impact leads to a pretty big explosion inside the church, and to those on the outside, it looks like their surprise attack might have done the trick. The young swordsman grabs his sword and leaps into the air, determined to strike down the false priest. No one hates the priest more than Vlad, so it's no surprise that he wants to finish the guy off now that he's got the chance. The young knight is extremely furious with the man and feels that he's crossed the line by messing with the kids of the village. So now, he wants to end things for good. The two opposite forces clash swords, and an intense battle ensues. The false priest does a good job holding his own against the aggressive young knight, blocking each of Vlad's attempts to strike him down. As the two fighters go at it, the rest of the church begins to burn all around them. The flames from the burning cart, which exploded, have now spread across the entire building. Vlad is way too focused on killing the priest to care about the flames around them, and the prophet is also too engrossed in the fight to think of running away. As the battle becomes more intense, their eyes begin to glow, and at this point, the priest begins to realize who he's fighting. The prophet looks into Vlad's blue eyes and sees the source of the power in there. The figure he sees looks powerful, with glowing, bolt-like eyes and a terrifying aura, but this doesn't exactly scare the priest. Just looking at the shadowy figure, the prophet recognizes the man, and he's amazed by the fact that they get to meet again. It excites him because it appears that he has a history with the man he saw in Vlad's eyes. Vlad notices the priest getting all excited about something, so he just gets more upset because he's trying to kill the guy, and he's just messing around. Enraged by this, the young knight intensifies his attacks and tells the priest to stop spewing nonsense. Right now, all he wants is for the guy to just be dead. So, he takes action and proceeds to go in for the killing blow. Using his sword, he dives in, attempting to deliver a fatal jab on the prophet's side, but it appears that the annoying priest sees it coming. While Vlad is doing all he can to take down the evil force, the focus shifts to Lady Justia. The white-haired knight still looks pretty exhausted after her first clash with the prophet. Sir Gregory rushes to her, asking if she is all right, and in response, she just reminds him that he's already in a lot of danger just by being in the church. Hearing this, the bearded knight simply admits that they had no choice but to visit the church. The children in the village are dying, and they know that this place is the reason for it, so they can't just sit back and watch things keep getting worse. However, they never imagined that this was the kind of evil they would discover when they arrived. The place is littered with the walking dead, and Sir Gori is so disturbed because he has no idea what exactly is even going on in the church yet. Seeing his concerns, Lady Justia reveals that they have to go to the bell tower, explaining that it's the source of the curse. Sir Gregory understands this and is determined to help the Holy Knight, but he also knows that they don't have time to clear the way and proceed carefully. Because of this, he believes that they'll have to split the group to find a way to the tower, even though that will be very risky. The bearded knight looks around and starts to come up with a plan. Sir Cade can't use Aura, so he feels that they'll have to get that archer out of the church first. 
Knowing that he needs to create an opening for Cade, Gregory jumps in to join the fight. The big guy stomps his foot into the ground to announce his presence before charging at the evil priest with his aura activated. Sir Gregory leaps into action and tackles the prophet with insane speed and strength. Vlad is even shocked when he sees his opponent suddenly slammed into the earth. With all the energy surging through Gregory's body, he feels strong enough to hold down the enemy long enough to buy the others some time. He's already done a good job separating the priest from Vlad. So now all he has to do is keep the guy occupied long enough for Vlad and the others to make it out to the bell tower. While pinning the prophet down, Sir Gregory calls out to Vlad, informing him of what was just said about the bell tower. He admits that he doesn't know exactly what's going on at the tower, but all he knows is that he wants the young knight to go and destroy it. Vlad hears these words from his superior and realizes that he's been given a very important mission. He's determined not to fail. The young swordsman accepts the mission without hesitation and dashes out of the church with incredible speed. He's determined to make sure that Sir Gregory's sacrifice won't be in vain. Despite being pinned to the ground, the prophet refuses to let Vlad escape like that, so he summons his undead soldiers and orders them to go after the blonde swordsman. Just like that, the zombie-like victims reawaken and drop everything else to stop Vlad from making it out of the church. Vlad realizes that his task just got a lot more difficult, so he curses out, but this doesn't make him go any slower. The sea of dead people runs toward him, so he just charges at them with even more speed. It's the only way for him to make it out, so he forces his way through them, pushing and shoving to clear a path for himself. But he quickly realizes that there are just too many of them. Just when it looks like he's about to be overwhelmed by their numbers, a powerful beam of light blasts through the sea of zombies, creating a clear path for him. Vlad is shocked. Perplexed by what just happened, he turns around. And that's when he sees Sir Cade working alongside Lady Justia. She used her holy energy to make his arrow strike even more powerful to blast the dead slaves out of the way in one shot. They did a good job clearing the path the first time, but the truth is that there are still a lot more victims in the church. More and more of the undead warriors begin to pop out from every corner of the building, so it becomes pretty obvious that the archer isn't done yet. Seeing the sea of victims attempting to swallow his friend, the guy tells Vlad to keep running straight ahead and promises to cover him. Sir Cade continues to launch his golden arrows over and over, taking down one zombie with each shot. Not even a single arrow goes to waste. Even with such a perfect kill rate, the enemy forces are just still too many for them to handle. Sir Cade won't be able to cover the young swordsman perfectly, and Vlad knows this. So he concludes that he'll have to take matters into his own hands regardless. As such, he keeps charging at them, and as they keep popping up, the voice in his head reminds him that he has to hurry. At this point, he's forced to go full berserk on the victims, blasting his way through them like a steam train. He continues to slaughter the zombies endlessly, and as he does this, a thought runs through his mind. All worlds in the universe are precious, but even so, not everyone can protect themselves. Yet he and his fellow knights are people who have sworn to protect the helpless. So if they're ever in a place where they are needed, they have no choice but to act, especially if they're in the moment. As knights, they're not granted the luxury of hesitation in times of need. So Vlad knows that he must burn himself to become the torch that lights up the darkness, and this is the second sword master's code. With this line engraved in Vlad's mind, he remains steadfast and continues to fight his way through the sea of enemy forces.